بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Welcome to another step inshallah in this um, Quran step on ayah number 30 surah number 2 surah al-Baqarah um, we've reached up to here I shall recite from here to here أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So we're going to deal with this final two parts inshallah. وَنَحْنُ And we نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ We declare your praise وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ And sanctify you Remember the previous ayahs The angels Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us The beginning of the story of Adam alayhi salam He says وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ And when your Lord said to the angels إِنِّي جَاعِلُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً Indeed, I am placing on the earth a khalifa. So their response was, قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا They said, will you place on her the earth? مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا One who does fasad, وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاء And who sheds blood. And now they give their reasoning as to why they, they are a, the more appropriate choice. وَنَحْنُ While we, نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ Declare your praise وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ And sanctify you So what does the word نُسَبِّحُ mean? It's related to the word تَسْبِيح So let's see what the scholars say What تَسْبِيح The word related to نُسَبِّحُ مُشْتَقٌ مِّنَ السَّبَح It comes from the word سَبَح Which literally means swimming So what is swimming? وَهُوَ المر السريع في الماء أو في الهواء هي what they mean by سبح is to go quickly either in water or in the air so why are the angels saying this فالمصبح the person who does تسبيح مسرع في تنزيه الله وتبرئته من السوء the person who does تسبيح of Allah سبحانه وتعالى or the angel is musri just like that person swimming is quick to do tanzih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of any defect and is has no nothing evil associated with him this is the literal the, the original meaning of tasbih comes from swimming because of fast passage of movement and so that a person, when they hear Allah's name, they say, Subhanallah, that's when we're doing tasbih. So, or Subhanallah, or Bihamdi, as the angels do. They say tasbih and hamd. And that means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has nothing that does not befit him. And he is uh, free of any evil or anything bad. So that's literally what so the angels are constantly declaring Allah's praise, but also declaring Him free from any thing that doesn't befit Him. لك, here at the end, they also say we do taqdis. <coughs> literally, it's translated here as sanctify. Sanctify is one of those words that you probably have to look up in dictionary because we don't usually use it regularly. And it literally means to declare something as holy. Another meaning in English is to purify. To purify from sin. Which sounds a lot like tasbih. But in Arabic, the meaning is a bit more clearer. So let's read what they say in Arabic. What taqdis, just like nusabbihu, the master is tasbih, nuqaddisu, the master is taqdis. What taqdis, at-tathir, Purification, what ta'zim, and declaring the greatness. Wa wasfihi bima yaliqu bihi min sifat al kamal. So here, 
in Taqdis you also apply those attributes that are befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they are the perfect attributes, the perfect names and attributes. So yes, it has an element of uh, purification, but it's purifying and declaring something as divine or as holy and giving the best names and attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we compare the two, what is the difference between نُقَدِّسُ لَكْ and uh, and, and, and what is the connection, sorry, between نُقَدِّس and نُسَبِّح We'll take this question first because it's more related So فَيَكُونُ التَّسْبِيحْ نَفِي مَا لَا يَلِيقُ وَالتَّقْدِيسِ إِثْبَاتْ مَا يَلِيقُ So in a sense تَسْبِيحْ is to negate that which does not befit Allah whereas تَقْدِيس is to affirm إِثْبَاتْ مَا لَا مَا يَلِيقُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى what is befitting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is perfect and uh, declared to, uh, by himself or his messenger <coughs> and the reason in the ayah the angels first declared the tasbih first and then do taqdees min babi taqdeem al-takhliyati ala tahliya so first you want to free you want to declare that something does not have any weakness and then declare it is great. So if you notice, this is very similar to the statement of La ilaha illallah, the declaration of for becoming a Muslim. So if you think about it, the rule is La ilaha is like there is no God, there is nothing worthy of worship, there's nothing that's befitting to be called a God. La ilaha. So you're ruling out. Illallah. And then you're ruling in. You're saying, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. Allah is a God and nothing else is a God. So this is what, if you think about it in terms of defining things, if you want to talk about something, how do you know what something is? Well, you can say what it isn't and then you can say what it is. This is called rule out and rule in. In the same way, the angels are saying this. This is how they are behaving with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a regular basis نَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ we rule out all the things that are negative وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكْ and we rule in everything that is befitting for you and is connected to the divine and perfect okay <clears throat> last question what is the difference between نُقَدِّسُ لَكْ and نُقَدِّسُ كَ so in the Quran, it says وَنُقَدِّسُ and then it has لَك and outside the Quran, if you use the word نُقَدِّس you could have said نُقَدِّسُ كَ okay? so the scholars point this out and they say there are three specific things here so the first thing to understand is the verb نُقَدِّس is what is called uh, متعدي and muta'addi means in English it's a transitive verb okay and a transitive verb means the action of the verb applies on something else directly on another word directly the other word here is ka you it doesn't need a helping word so in the Quran it's written with a lamb but in the Arabic language you could have said nuqaddisu ka we declare your glory so why is this lamb there? So there's a reason for this lamb being there. Okay. So linguistically, نُقَدِّسُكَ is how you would translate and we sanctify you. So what is this lamb doing? So first of all, the scholars say that it's for emphasis. It's called زَائِدَ لِتَقْوِيَةِ الْمَعْنَى So this lamb emphasizes the meaning. The angels are emphasizing the meaning that we are the people who glorify you or the emphasizing the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala second is that it's for specification so the angels are saying that only we do this that's their impression that this creature that's going to come will not be able to do this but we are the only ones who can do this or we only do this to you so there is ikhlas as well or it's reflexive and this is very interesting and Sheikh Saadi points this one out he says 
أن يكون. And it is possible that we could interpret this. وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكْ أَنفُسَنَا That we glorify ourselves for you. Okay? We sanctify ourselves for you. أي. In other words. نُطَهِّرُهَا بِأَخْلَاقِ الْجَمِيلَةِ The angels, you can interpret this as saying that we purify ourselves and we make our manners beautiful as a sign of our love كَمُحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ وَخَشْيَتِهِ وَتَعْظِيمِهِ as a sign of our love for Allah, our fear of Allah and our feeling of greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَنُطَهِّرُهَا and we purify ourselves من الأخلاق الرذيلة from behavior that is base or low or vile. So subhanallah, there is a lot in in here, and um, uh, this is the meaning of نقدسولك as the scholars see it. So we'll stop there for today. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى آل ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد